bringing you the truth or something like the truth. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Hey, what's happening? Happy Thursday. Good afternoon and welcome. It's the bottom line on 100.7 The Score, 107thescore.com and the 100.7 The Score mobile app. Brought to you by our friends at Happy State Bank. Yeah. Also watchable on television, Fox 34 News Now. Yeah, yeah. However, wherever you're joining us from, we are happy that you've chosen to make us part of your Thursday afternoon. We being myself, Choice Woodman, Chris Sneed to my right, and Ben Poorman across the way. The poor man. Handling us today. You are more than welcome to chime in. You got thoughts, comments, questions, uh, score predictions. We want to hear it all. Bring it in on the Yates Flooring Center chat line through the 100.7 The Score mobile app and at 107thescore.com. Uh, you can take that mobile app just about anywhere with you. Even listen in out in Swink, Colorado, if you so choose. Ayo hey, Sneeda. What's up? What it do, man? It do. What it do, y'all, man? What it, it do? do? It do. Um, I just looked up and saw this random like rainbow of colors on our big board now. And yeah, I what, saw that. What I, happened? I think that represents Saturday. Because there's a lot of stuff going on? Apparently there's a lot of stuff going on. It is a, It is going mean, to be a busy got, Saturday. I mean, you've got uh, Optimum Game Day Live. Of course. I mean, you've got the, uh, the Thetford and Ashby show. And then you've got the, the bottom line. And you've got the uh, the morning drive. And you've got the end of the bench. The Fraser Alumni Pavilion going on got going band mask rider Raider red and you get the big noon kickoff yeah it's double t varsity tailgate fraser alumni pregame um you know you've got all kinds of you got the green space you've got you've got the the, the yin yang twins yin yang over in the raider alley one o'clock shake it like a salt shake it shake it like a salt shake it shake it like a salt shake it I that, there's another there song, that. right? I don't know. I feel like, that's the only, that's the only one, one I know. I know. It's, it's the only one song you know. But there's got to be another you know. one. Like almost all, almost all these bands that they bring, it's it's there's one main song, and then it's like, oh, yeah. I know that one too, or I know yeah. that, like a couple of other. This ones. is my only home game of the year. Okay, I am going to make it cherish count. It. Cherish it. I am going. I am going to be anywhere and everywhere. I'll, I'll be at the big game kickoff. I will be at the double T varsity. I'll be at the Frazier most of the time. I will be over at uh, Raider Alley for a little bit, and I will be over. I'm going to stop by uh, Gus's tailgate. I'm going to stop by the Home Finders tailgate. I, I'm going to I'm going to be I'm going to be in and around and all around. I mean, this will be the the everything surrounding this game. This is what makes me nervous because you've had a couple of games like this where there's been big yeah. Big events surrounding the mm-hmm. game, including the Patrick Mahomes game of a couple yeah. of years ago. The the Ring of Honor game this year mm-hmm. was the, the Baylor game. Um, and Tech has not performed well. Tech has performed excellent under Joey McGuire at home outside except, of a couple except, of those. Except for the big games. Those instances. And yeah. this one falls in that category because all of the stuff you just there mentioned. There is so much hype happening here. And, and can, you yeah. got the, the uniforms, yeah, the, the you got Patrick the Mahomes. Mahomes uniforms that and are that, going and, down. Is you he? Got, is he rolling, rolling to town? No, because he's got a game tomorrow. Tomorrow? Sunday, sorry. Okay, I was going to say, he put a Friday, yeah, Friday. Night game in the NFL? No, he's got a game Sunday, Okay, so he won't be there. Um, I was curious but, if they have but, a Thursday game. Within the Thursday I mean, game. rumors of the list that is uh, oh, credentialed yeah. this week yeah. is... <laughs> there could be people. I mean, there's going to be probably quite a few uh, former Dallas Cowboys. People you've heard of yeah, on the sidelines. That will, that will be hanging out. Uh, on the sidelines, who knows? I mean, kind of, kind of curious. Do they rappers, stay the do entire know? game, or do they just show up for pregame, glad hand, hug it out, and then hop back on their their private jet back to uh, prosper? I don't know. That's a good. I, question. I think that's how that happens. They I think there's going to be a lot no, of. Paper. I think there's some people that will watch. Yeah, the like, less, but the the high end, the, the, the high, sports guys, I bet will be there watching the game. I doubt that. that you don't think so? Out fast. 
Yeah, yeah. They get there. They come in. They glad hand. They be part of the the show because you know Big Fox Noon is gonna is gonna show show all those guys. Yeah, hanging around, dapping it up, running around, high fiving it. Okay. And then they're gonna and then they're gonna get gone. They'll get out. They'll get in their they'll get in their private planes and leave. Okay. So I I, I don't do, know. I would stick around and watch the game. I don't know. Sometimes I I guess I we'll mean, see. Different strokes, man. I don't know, if you're tech, would you accommodate with like if uh, there's no open suites? But would you accommodate no. if you had to with, with those kind of people? If they're like, "Hey, y'all got a, a good place for me to sit?" Yeah, it's right over there in row 32. <laughs> you sit next to Billy Joe and Bubba. Good luck. Okay. No, they'll, they'll, they're they're going to be probably on the sidelines. Oh yeah, no, I I figure they will be. Yeah. One sideline. One. Uh, real quick, gonna uh, hey. God is good. Power of prayer. Uh, thank you for those who lifted up my father-in-law yesterday. Good. He's doing much better today. Good. And uh, God will creek don't rise. He might get home by okay. this weekend. So we'll we'll see that. There you go. Yeah. So awesome, awesome to hear. Um, so yeah, we've got all sorts of you know extracurricular when it comes to this game. Yeah. The game itself should be mightily entertaining. I I, I mean, just hope so. I mean because. You just hope that we don't get, you know, like get down two or three touchdowns where it, oh, it sure. takes the crowd out of the game. You just yeah, that I mean, that, that was the worst part right. of that Baylor game is you've never felt like you got the crowd. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, what? You're 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 doing what you should do. You're not paying attention. I'm having to look at, at that uh, Ben Portman just sit there and eat this peanut butter and jelly sandwich right in front Is that what that is? That is exactly what he's enjoying it. And my mouth. What kind of jelly? Oh, as he, as he just it's stuffed grape. it. It's Welch's. Great. Oh yeah, but great. And he's he's in that right in front of me, just right in front Wait, of me. Are just... we? What is the uh, best jelly for a PB and J? Um, it's grape. Yeah, okay. It is is grape, and it's not jelly. Grape it's is jam. fine. It's jam. I personally have had strawberry before, and it's not bad. I just prefer grape. Okay. I mean, I I I'm a grape guy. Now you know what? I'm I've newly I've newly come to the strawberry. I've I have come to the strawberry. You just discovered it fifty five uh, years no, into the I life. I didn't or just what? discover it. I, okay. About ten years ago, strawberry got into the wheelhouse. Okay, and uh, and I'm and I'm happy I, I made that. I'm switch. a jelly guy, as you could probably look at me and say, I'm a bowl full of jelly. I uh, I I will eat almost anything. Jelly I'm jam. A, I'm, I'm a jam dude. I'm not much of a preserves guy. I don't like to chew my jelly. That's fine. I'll <laughs> get a little. What are we doing here? No, We're, hey, you you brought it out, man. You sat there and you devoured. You devoured that right in front of me. And my mouth was watering and I couldn't stop. <laughs> That's probably something I shouldn't have said on the air. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Underrated for the PB&J, the uh, apricot jelly. Um, or preserves, no, really. No, no. Absolutely. No. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's probably it's probably... It's it's grape, it's strawberry, it's fifty yards of crap, and everything else. Oh no, four fruits no. of the forest. No, that what no. the heck are you doing now? What are you? Wait doing? a second. Do you have another no. peanut butter and jelly sandwich over no, there? No, no. The music. I hear that, but that's it's, it's no. Andy Williams. We man. have rules. It's the most wonderful time of rules. the year. Tell that to Rob Bro. Thank you very much. No, Rob Bro doesn't get to determine. He's what the one goes who called here. it. Yeah, he doesn't get to determine. You get you have a mind, Ben. Oh god, just stop stop Tell doing that. To... Just stop eating that in front of me, man. You gotta like you gotta <laughs> you can't do that. Snee, do you know the difference between jelly and jam? Yes. You do? Yes, it's consistency. No, you can uh <laughs> you can't jelly a copy machine. It's <laughs> the bottom line. <laughs> On one hundred point seven the score. Getting to the point, but taking the scenic route to get there. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Happy Thursday. It's November 7th. So way before Christmas time. And 107thescore.com. Choice Woodman. Chris Need, Ben Porman with you this afternoon. Y'all keep the uh, thoughts and comments rolling in on the Yates Flooring Center chat line via that 100.7 score mobile app the uh did you see your guy who's my guy got super bowl tickets who's my guy the this is our colts guy colts guy 
Do you know who I'm talking about? No. The this is our Colts. This is oh our that team. guy. Yes, <laughs> he got brought in by the Colts. No way. Called the uh, fan of the year for 2024, and they gave him Super Bowl tickets. No way. Yes. So if you write a cheese ball song, you get. I'm not okay. I'm not 100 percent sure he's all there. Okay. Okay. Like so, is this? Is, is, I I okay. think. Yeah, I don't. I don't know exactly. So this is kind of a this is kind of a good deal. Yes, yeah, seems okay. like a good all deal. Right, I all think because right. apparently there's a there's a song. If you go on YouTube, there's a song basically for every single game for the Colts. Like there's the guy writes specified. A song? Yeah, wow. it's all the same song. Oh wow! It's all the this is our Colts, but there's just different lines. He's got a different line for every game. I think he drops an f bomb in one of them. Really? <laughs> Towards I don't know if it's the Dolphins or wow. what, but it was yeah. Maybe it's the Texans. I don't know. Um, so yeah, he got he got his Super Bowl tickets. So congrats to uh, that guy. Also, did you see? Uh, were you watching your Wheel of Fortune last night? I heard that Lubbock was a mention. Dallas, Houston, and Lubbock, okay. Texas. I did not watch this. I I have this is probably the old I saw man. it. I saw it show up about three or four times on my Facebook feed. I'm I'm a very old man. Uh, Wheel of Fortune it. is recorded, so I, I wa- wait, so I can what? go back and watch. Wait. This. Wait, what? I can go back and watch this episode. Actually, we could do it right now. But yeah. no, no. But why? Because I enjoy it. Okay. I mean, you, I would be you pretty do good you, man. Would you, would you, would you get to I would do pretty well on that show. Um, wait a second. No, wait a second. You're sitting at home. Oh, absolutely. Drinking your drinking your 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 yoo-hoos and your no, and now I'm not a yoo-hoo guy. Nesquik. Mostly. You're okay. You're drinking your 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 glass of Nesquik, mm-hmm. and. And now you're sitting there, you're solving all the puzzles. But the second they put you on that set, and you got the oh, you got the guy over there, and he's spinning one final spin of the wheel. We're gonna give you the R S T L and E. Now give us two more consonants and another vowel. Good gosh! And now you're thinking, I can get this. Uh, sound it out. Uh, 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 Dallas, Houston, Lubbock, Texas. You done? No, I got I got plenty more of this. The fact that you just told me that you're a 65 year old man I would in a 39 well year old body. Show. I just know I'd do well on that show. Okay, I would do well on that one. Uh, Price is right. Oh, gosh, I think fairly good at card sharks. <laughs> one dollar. <laughs> um, I'm a game show guy. I I've always loved okay. game shows. So anyway, uh, to the point. One part of that show is you're supposed to have to pronounce things correctly. Did someone say Lebach? The way she said it, and maybe we can pull the audio here in a little bit. The way she said it was not correct. Lubach. And I I think they gave it to her. I think they let her have it. Like, you're supposed to pronounce things Dallas, correctly. Houston, and Lubach. It was something along those lines. So, uh, old Razzle Dazzle says, Dang it, if that news means Clint's going to play that song during his segment, <laughs> he probably will. Uh, ben says you're kidding me on the not this Ben. Uh, by the way, ben. that kidding that, me on the Colts guy, right? Which which part am I kidding you on? Whether he's not all there or Super that Bowl they tickets. gave him free Super Bowl tickets? Because yes, that is that is true. Uh, how bad do y'all think the Buffaloes beat Texas Tech this weekend? Thank you nah. for texting in, Dion. Um, <laughs> look at me, look at me, look at me, choice. I I this don't is, know. This is I the mean, same person that told us that Tech was going to get crammed last week. So, well. or you know, all all the time. I is this our SEC lover? It might be SEC, 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 SEC. Regardless, I do think. Um, I think it'll be a good game. I think it's going to be a good game. I think what would if Texas Tech gets boat raced in this game? It's another one of those distraction games. And it's another one of those we got to figure something out uh, when when there are big things happening surrounding the game because yeah. you want these kind of atmospheres you want these kind well, of think about the what what they have done this year Colorado I mean they have they've had to come from behind a couple of times one Baylor um, and, and then they were they are a they are a very close fumble away from not being the team that they are right now oh sure sure. I mean, I mean that, that I mean, and a, and a hail mary, by the way. They, hail mary. They uh, Twice. hail mary. Yo, they one guy dropped it, and the second guy, I, Baylor. How can you let that guy get behind you twice? Look, I, I don't, 
I, I don't know. Colorado, but the thing is, they have improved over the last month. Yeah, they Since have. that I'm, game, I'm, no one's decided they continue not. to get better. Um, this is a matchup that I'm fascinated by because I think there are absolutely ways to beat this Colorado team. They're, they're not, they're not in, the they're best not team in the country. They are not invincible, yeah. but they have two of the best players in the country. And it's not just two this of the best true. players. They do have um, it's really like three a of the best receiving play- core. And three of the best players in the country because you count Travis Hunter on offense and defense. Right. Yeah. So I, I do think that um, there are ways to beat them. And one way – is is having a balanced attack. I think the Texas Tech may be the most balanced offense that they have faced this year in terms of of just truly being able to throw the football and run the football. I mean, you you look at the other games that they've played in um and maybe the best balanced offense that they've faced this year. I don't know that Colorado has faced anything quite like Texas Tech this year. Just like last week, Iowa State had not faced an offense to the caliber of Texas Tech this year. Iowa State, and I'm not bragging on 23 points, but it's true. The the 133 yard, passing yards allowed per game for Iowa State going into last week was against predominant rushing offenses. So it does skew the numbers. It was still a fantastic defense, but um, – it does matter when you're you're facing something different you haven't faced. The other part, the flip side of it is you do have a major crowd on your your side and your advantage. You've got to find a way to get the crowd going early and and getting after the quarterback. So Dur Sanders hadn't been interception prone, but when he has thrown interceptions, it's because he's got pressure in his face, like almost every other quarterback out there. Um so I, I think Texas Tech's pass rush has looked much better in the last two weeks uh, than it did early in the season. And if you can get that kind of pressure against still a bad offensive line, this is not – that is the clearest weakness on Colorado's team is their offensive line. Yeah. So if you can get some pressure uh, there, it doesn't mean you're going to win the game because Shadur Sanders is kind of like Patrick Mahomes was on third down. He's gonna. He he can still get a third and sixteen for you. He's, yeah, he's he's he he extends plays. He's yep. not the most mobile guy in the world. He doesn't run a lot, really. No, I, I think. But but he's he he extends plays and he finds guys, <laughs> and and they can, you know, they can catch it. That's the one thing that those guys can do. They can catch it. They don't run the ball a whole lot. They can catch it. Uh, someone says thanks. Or the same texter said thank you for the criticism. I'm a tech graduate, but I'm afraid of. Colorado will beat Tech by a lot. I'm, I'm just messing. I mean, that's fine. Well, great, I mean, great I mean, you got that opinion, but, but I don't think Colorado is a lot of points better than Texas Tech. I don't know that they are are better than Texas Tech. I think this is a fairly I think that was equal matchup. Pre coping on his part, and that's fine. And which is fine. He says, if, if I just start to believe Pre-cope. that we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get housed and we're gonna get faced and we're gonna get boat raced, then when it happens. You're ready for You're it. You're already for it. I already knew this happened. I told everyone well, you on the radio. You get a pleasant surprise on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I pre-coped for the Iowa State game. I pre-coped for that. I just said. Yeah, you I, did. I, I said, I don't think we're going to do well. I'm not going to watch it. And it just happened that I left the TV on in my hotel room when I got back from the Arkansas game. And it was on, and we were already up 7 nothing, And I was sucked in, man. <laughs> uh, choice, are you saying Tech should play complimentary football? <laughs> Hey, but absolutely! They, but we better walk up a linebacker and play have and have strong gap integrity. I actually do think you need good gap integrity in this game. Horse name? Walk, gap walk integrity? Up, walk up every linebacker you want. But, we walk up some linebackers. But you really do have to worry about rush lanes. But we've got to have guys with their hands in the dirt. You want? Come on, keep, choice. You want to keep Shadur Sanders in the pocket? Yes. Gap integrity. So forget gap integrity. We just need good rush lanes. As long as we play complimentary football, it's okay with me. Someone's going to explain to Sneed what that is. Oh, I understand what complimentary football is. I do understand it. I just think it's so cliched. Bringing you the truth, or something like the truth, this is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. 
Joyce Woodman, Chris Need with you from the First United Bank studio. It's the bottom line on 100.7 score and 107thescore.com. We will uh, find our way to Kaylee's Daily here in a moment. Got to uh, congratulate. I thought we had another. Yeah, we had a winner. Someone won. This one. Why is this one not on top? What? Uh, What? Congratulations. To our guy Kyler Livingston, who won 250 bucks today. I think that might actually be old Razzle Dazzle on the chat line. Really? I don't know if he wants me to Batman him and Outie. unveil his uh, his but I think I think you can confirm old Razzle Dazzle if that's you. And if you it is, congratulations on the 250 bucks. You can be like Kyler. All you gotta do is uh, take the words we give you. At 10.45, 12.45, and 2.45 here on 100.7 The Score, courtesy of The Home Zone. The Home Zone. Here we go. Sorry. Uh, Go type them in at 107thescore.com. Your word right now is pass. Pass. That's it. P-A-S-S. Make sure you include the P. Um... Go type that in at 107thescore.com, and thanks for listening. Mm-hmm. Let's get to Kaylee's Daily. <laughs> my cat sounded like at 2.30 this morning. <laughs> right in my ear. It's weird. <laughs> Ben, choice. It's time for Kayla's Daily. It's brought to you each and every day at this time by me. Suck it, Chuck. Kaylee says, happy International Land Snail Day. Land ever- Snail Day? If you've ever wondered about what purpose a snail serves in nature, today is your lucky, lucky day. Choice, did you know that there are over... What am I looking for here? Types of species of of land snails. Uh, 25. (laughs) 40,000. I was close. (laughs) There are over 40,000 different species of land snails, a.k.a. snails. Snails are a different type of mollusk. And they are in the order of the gastropoda, the gastropoda, which loosely translates into stomach foot. Stomach foot. Yes. This refers to their singular foot that they use to traverse terrain such as jungles, Arctic regions, and even desert-like climates with the right conditions. Stomach foot. Stomach foot. Snails are a vital role in the ecosystem as decomposers. They are the final link of the food chain as they break down decomposing matter into usable materials to revitalize the soil and begin the food cycle again. A snail shell is made primarily from calcium, which they use to gather by consuming decomposing material. material, Sorry, marial. Marial. This then is transferred into their shells in layers, and predators can then consume the snails for a calcium boost, which is like the world's first healthy supplement. The land snail. Have you ever eaten snail? Hmm? Escargot? No. Would you? No. I will eat almost anything. Apparently. That's rude. Is that a fat joke, Sneed? <laughs> no. I will eat almost anything <laughs> once. Like, I'm going to try just about anything. Are you like Are you like that? Uh, I have that yet to try a celebrity. Not celebrity. That, that, that chef that watches people make stuff and then criticizes it, and he goes, I'll give it like a one and a half out of ten. I'd try it once. Oh, it's awful. It's great. You're not People, talking about like Gordon Ramsay? No, no. This guy's on, he's like the TikTok dude. The, oh, he's like, okay. sit there. You get a real close up of his face while he's watching. He's, what the heck are they making here? You're going to, you're going to, yeah, just dump all that right into there. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're doing. Yeah. Uh huh. A little dollop. Yeah. More like a big dollop. And he's, he's hilarious. And he's, he's okay. just, it's like, oh, this is terrible. This is awful. Uh, I'd give it uh, 2.3 out of 10. I'd eat it once. Okay. No, I I'd try anything once, almost. Not anything. me. There's some stuff I would just I'm all the way out on that. Calf fries. I accidentally ate that one time, and, and? I'm all the way out on that. 
that was not again. good. In the moment. It's one of those things that you kind of you kind of go, oh, this is kind of cool until you realize what, and now it's in your mouth, and you're like, okay, wish I hadn't done that. That's what. Never mind. Um, <laughs> better. Sometimes you just have to hit the restraint button. I, I know where you were going, buddy. That's the, that's I, the problem. I, I know most, exactly I where you were going. I think everybody did. Yeah. Uh, Muriel, horse name. Okay. <laughs> Good old Muriel. That sounds like an 80 year old woman's name, right? Muriel. 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 Sitting there knitting the crochet, which are two different things, I know. Uh, okay, back to the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Someone says. Uh, who are the big stars coming in for the football game? Uh, I don't know. All I know picture is your rumors. '90s Cowboys fandom and uh, and even some of your 2000s Cowboys fandom. I have not fandom. heard anything from anybody specific. I've just heard rumors that you could see Troy Aikman and those likes. So Tony Romo could be. Um, I mean, and Troy's a Monday Night Football guy now, right? Yeah. So that would that he would could, fit. Tony I mean, would. that's why that's why I say these guys are going to show up. They're going to they're going to hobnob in pregame and they're going to go get get back on their private well, plane. Troy, I mean, Troy doesn't have to be anywhere till the next day. Like if he's a Monday, I, you know the Tony Romo one is the one that kind of because if he's got a, a noon game those guys they spend so much time in prep and interviewing and things like that it's not like these yeah, guys Tony, roll in there and just go Romo's the one that I'm, I'm it's it would it'd be a little more. less but you know I I could see uh you know a guy like uh um the Moose Moose Johnston oh sure sure I'm sure there would be plenty Flown on several flights with him at a DMW. Moose has, been, Moose has been in Lubbock plenty of times. Yeah. Um, this one from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. I'm not knocking up anybody for putting up your lights in better weather. Just don't turn them on until after oh, Thanksgiving. With, there will not be one light burning until Ding. turkey has been consumed. Uh, this from the chat line. I was in a live audience or a live audience member for two Family Feud celebrity episodes. One had Stephen A. Smith on the game show. Oh, my. I, that, was he a that big idiot show, there on the game show, just like he is? I'm not a big Steve Harvey fan of, on the game show. On, no? On, no. I, just, I think he's funny, but... I don't even think he's funny. Family Feud is one of the most overrated game shows. I, I it just, is, it's it, a great like concept. It was funnier. It was better with Richard Dawson. I am not oh, sure. a fan of it with uh, with with uh, Steve Harvey. And who was... They had someone else after Richard Dawson. It didn't go right from Richard Dawson to Steve Harvey. John Hurley. Oh, there's yeah. been like there's been like fifteen guys yeah. that have done that. But I mean, Richard Dawson was was kind of like he'd come down there and he just halfway molest these ladies as they're you know kissing them. <laughs> you know, he's kissing everybody and he's like dirty old man just figure it out, out grandma. <laughs> I used to think that was like, does anyone think that's weird? He's just kissing all these ladies going down the line, and the and the hotter they were, the better kiss they got. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, this is from the chat line choice which compliment should you tech use you look your buffs look good wow. or you guys look good in the buff wow okay wow uh, we need a balanced attack Chocho Woodman his uh, I guess apparently my my cliche there the balanced attack thing is real I mean oh you, you we really and is. it can be cliche sure but I like balance 50 50 is That's very difficult football. to defend if if you can't lean on one thing or the other, uh, it is a difficult Their defense thing to isn't defend. isn't defend. really that great, and uh, their offensive some, line is not really that great. They just have three. Colorado's got great individual pieces, and that's and, what and when they're makes together, tough. those guys are difficult to stop. I wish they'd bring back Double Dare. Someone says on the chat line, yeah, wasn't there like some controversy around that show and the host of that show, like a like a I mean I mean like a scandal double dare i don't remember like the guy that was the guy that was on the show al just, borland was a host for family feud for a while That's the guy like, yeah the, the guy, guy from, from yeah tool time or from uh home improvement yeah uh sneed are you racist don't like steve harvey but you like white guys the white guys i think that was said in jest oh of course it was said in jest it had to be unless you don't have your tv on then turn it on yeah i don't like steve harvey at all that's not true. at all I, no i do I like okay. steve harvey he's steve harvey is not my favorite comedian. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's you know that's his background. If you didn't know, I mean, he's, he he started off as a comedian before he jumped into all these things. And you know, I mean, there's pictures of him when he actually had hair. Yeah, and before he got his his uh, teeth bonded, teeth bonded, <laughs> stuck them all together. Yeah. All right, y'all keep uh, the thoughts coming in on the AIDS flooring center chat. We'll see y'all next week. We can talk about the victory. 
We will talk about the victory. Yeah. Just need to have a good rest of your day. Word up. Bringing you the truth or something like the truth. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. On to hour number two. It is the bottom line on 100.7 The Score, 107thescore.com. And the 100.7 The Score mobile app. We're watchable on television, Fox 34 News Now. And on your YouTube channel, 950, the number you need for your AM dial. However, wherever you're joining us from, we are happy that you've chosen to make us part of your Thursday. Alongside Jamie Lint, I'm Choice Woodman. Ben Poorman back behind the glass taking care of us. Y'all keep hitting us up. If you got thoughts, comments, questions, bring them in. Yates Flooring Center chat line, easiest way to reach us through that 100.7, the score mobile app. Uh, you can take that app anywhere with you, even listen in out in Sisters, Oregon. Okay. What's up, Jamie? Oh, not too much. Ready for uh, an exciting two hours of sports talk radio with you. I hope you brought a lot. Okay. No, we got plenty to get into. Uh, there is uh, a question here. That says, how have they announced the time for the last red black game yet? I have not seen anything. Have you? At the end of yesterday's game, the PA announcer said uh, three o'clock. Okay, three o'clock Friday is the plan. Is the plan? Um, okay, I didn't. I did not hear. That. You know, Mother Nature may have other plans. Yeah. Um, do you think they will play it if they can't play it Friday, or do you think that? I think it's possible that they would play it on Sunday. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's out of the question even to push it to Monday or Tuesday or something, but I also don't think it's out of the question for them to just say, um, you know what, we've played four games. Um, we're just going to go ahead and get a practice in somewhere along the way and just I, finish this thing. I think we've seen an example of both. In, yes. Uh, in rec- or in yeah. I know there was one years. year that they didn't play the last one. So – that brings me to uh, this. Jamie and I were sitting at the Red Black Series yesterday watching the uh, the black team take it to the red team. And and it goes final. Um, black team was the home team, so did not play the bottom of the ninth. And uh, as soon as it, it's kind of wrapping up, the uh, fight song is playing over the speakers. Almost at the exact same time, I said... Hey, we won. <laughs> Red Raiders won. And Jamie says, there's another loss. <laughs> it was the epitome of our two uh, personalities and fandoms. I'm always... Well, a, somebody has to win pumper. and somebody have to lose. Well, yes. <laughs> I was clearly rooting for the red team. Apparently, yeah. They were down in the series. I and mean, I wanted game five to matter. And I'm all about the black. So, I mean, that's... Yep. Uh, choice hopping on the bandwagon and the team that's winning. Well, of course. Typical. Why yeah. not? Mm-hmm. Actually, mm-hmm. like if I have a favorite player right now, am I allowed to say this? Because I am on a few broadcasts. Am I, can you pick a favorite? Sure you can. You don't get in trouble for that? Sure you can. If I have a favorite player and a guy maybe I'm pulling for more than anybody else going into this season, it's probably TJ Pompey. Well, well I mean, he's one of your better players. Well, and, sure. I, mm-hmm. But I, I just like – I like his game. I like his skill set. And he struggled towards the end of last year, so I want to see him. Yeah. No, that's fair. He's he's And he's a guy that I think is easy to root for. So Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's Th- fair. That's yeah. probably it. And he was on the red team, so I guess. I mm-hmm. guess so. and there are uh, some interesting new faces around, obviously, and, and you and I have discussed this some, but um, th- there will be obvious impact from newcomers on this team with the – a mixture of some some returners. Yeah, and um, there's some guys that I thought would be in the mix to be, whether it be newcomers or returners, that I thought would be in the mix for a lot of playing time and a lot of at bats. And um, I, I, you and I sat there yesterday, and mm-hmm. I, I gave you my starting lineup, and I <laughs> felt like there were a couple of guys that are 
that I thought would be a big big factor, and who's to say that they aren't going to? I mean, if, if Coach Tadlock's listening right now, he's laughing at me. Probably. Trying to fill out a lineup card in early November. He's right? like, I don't even know the lineup, Jamie. Yeah. I think once he said to me, who's going to start? We're just trying to figure out if these guys can put their socks on. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think he said that to me once. That is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. Um, well, I mean, just look at the position battles you have going right now. Third base is going to be fascinating. Second base is going to be very interesting to see. Um, center field, or really a lot of the outfield, but center field in particular. You're going to have some really good p- position battles going into the the spring this year. Yeah, it, it, there's there's no question about it. I, I mean, I, I think that, I mean, if you just want me to spin around the horn here, I, I'll be, be shocked if it. Dylan Maxey is not your starting catcher. Right. Um personally to me Hudson Parker uh, appears to be a better receiver than Davis Rivers behind the plate what and thrower catcher? and Sorry. um but at the <laughs> Sorry. I got you I, I had to that was Sorry. good Go on. um but uh Davis obviously has a dynamite bat from the left side of the plate uh so you want to get him in the lineup when you can mm-hmm. um at first base, I think uh, Robin Villanueva is the best defensive first baseman you've had since that guy Eric Gutierrez. Um, and uh, both those sh- last two names you mentioned hit home runs yesterday too. Yes, Rivers and, and Villanueva. Yeah, and Villanueva's got serious power, um, but he's kind of a feast or famine at the plate. You know, well, big time run producer, but he's going to strike out a bunch for you. So, um, and it's okay other- to have one or two of those guys oh, in the sure, lineup. You sure. just don't want an entire sure. lineup full. I mean, you want run, you want your run producers. You don't want those guys looking to push one through the right side. They're, right. they're trying to hit one over the fence. Yeah, well, you want that. So um, I, I think Logan Hughes and or Peyton Scholes can also play first base, but I, I think it's Villanueva defensively is, is the top there. Um, he's the transfer from Tennessee, in case you don't recognize that name. Uh, it's second base. I thought going in the red and black series that Damian Bravo – Mm-hmm. was going to be your starting second baseman. Uh, and he's done nothing but good stuff in this series. But I, so far in this series, Antonelli Savateri is the <laughs> – I mean, he's your fall ball or red and black series MVP. Yep. Um, 11 hits and 22 at-bats, and eight of the 11 hits are extra base hits. So he's been spraying the ball over the field, all over the field. He's got great speed, good defender as well. Uh, doesn't swing and miss hardly at all. So he's a guy that it's hard to have in the lineup. And you also know Damian Bravo can be a great left fielder for you or right fielder or center fielder for that matter. And so if you're trying to get your best nine on the field, probably you're thinking Sabateri plays second, which is really his only position. And uh, and then you put Damian Bravo in the outfield. I think Tracer Lopez will be the starting shortstop with TJ Pompey as the backup. But I think Pompey is going to be the the starting first third baseman. And Peyton Scholes is a really good player that you brought in from Cal, a fifth-year guy yeah. that can really hit, picks it well at both third and first. Right now I'm trying to figure out where they're going to put him because he can hit. And, you know, you got the DH spot. And then in the outfield, I mean, if Bravo moves back to the outfield, um, I'm a huge fan of of Kyler Thompson. He, he had three hits yesterday. I think he's got ten hits in the series. It's the center fielder spot. But you've also heard that Jay Souza mm-hmm. – your highly regarded freshman from Hawaii, he was the best player that you you got in in the recruiting class, and because of an ankle injury that he suffered last spring, he's not played at all this fall. They're kind of keeping him out, and so you got to figure he's going to be a factor as well. So Logan Hughes is going to be at one of those corner outfield spots. The way he hits the ball, he's got three homers now. There's just it's there's a lot of really good hitters there. Getting to the point, but taking the scenic route to get there. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Alongside Jamie Lent, I'm Choice Woodman. Thursday edition of the Bottom Line on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. You'll keep your uh, commentary rolling in on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. We will get back to a few more of your thoughts in just a moment. Um, Right now, it's time for a question. Time now for Jamie's question of the day on 100.7 The Score. 
brought to you by someone not named Jamie and presented by Connecticut of West Texas. Life's hard. Your water shouldn't be. You know, I was thinking, Jamie, um, how this Colorado game might be remembered if you're able to get a win on Saturday. I'm, I'm thinking, okay, when will we go back to to say this is the best atmosphere game, most fun that we've had in the football stadium? Because there's a lot of basketball games in recent history where you can say, man, that was a that was a blast being in here. The Longhorn game, obviously, with Chris Beard's return. The, there's all sorts of games that, that qualify there. There's been some amazing baseball atmospheres, and especially in postseason play. But they got me thinking, oh, where do you go back to? Uh, in terms of in a win, what is the most memorable game you have had in the post Leach era at Jones Stadium? Well, we, there's some great ones in the Leach era. There's some sprinkled in in the post Leach era. But what's the most memorable win? Game atmosphere, all of that that you've had in the post Leach era. Gosh, choice. I know. I'm, I gave you one. I probably should have given you a little prep time for that because that is not a uh, not an easy. First one off, to come I don't like that you are asking the question because it's assuming. It's like insinuating that this week is going to be that this week is going to potentially be the top. So yeah. I think I think it's bad karma. I'm saying you have potential. I'm, I'm throwing the potential word out there. I think it's you think that's bad karma? Come on. Come on, Jimmy. Um Come on. And yeah. see, to me, this question would have been better. After you beat Colorado, you're like, is this the best sense in the last 10 years? And if not, who is? Okay, um, Jamie. <laughs> no, no, you're oh, good. You're good. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, two years ago, you beat Texas at home. And that's where my answer is. As far as most memorable, because of how that game was won, because you're winning it late, um, that's an overtime one, right? Yep. This is the last second one. I, uh, because that, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun for that particular game. Opponent obviously matters there. Mm-hmm. Yes. That, that was the answer for me. There, I've got a number two answer, but I want to let you guys. Okay, give me your number two answer. It was a long time ago, but when you beat up on uh, Geno Smith in West Virginia in 2012, 12? yeah, they came in ranked fifth in the country, and you you smoked them. You embarrassed them, yeah. That was a very <clears throat> memorable game because most didn't expect you to do it, but that, that's the Tuberville era. That's a long time. And you had some memorable wins for Cliff Kingsbury, but it seemed like all of those came away from home. Yeah, down the road, yeah. The Arkansas game was was memorable. The the two at Texas were memorable wins. Um, so those are the those are the two that my brain and I tried not to look them up too much because I was trying to actually go off of memory of of this, these made the impact the most to me. I'm sorry. This I mean, is the kind Houston, of a depressing question. The too. Houston one a uh-huh. few years back uh, that you came from behind and got it to overtime and then won. Yep. That was a ranked Houston team. At that the time. was a good Houston team. And it was right before they joined the Big 12 and all the mm-hmm. hype about, you know, they had had a one loss or two loss season the year before. I want to say one. I think yeah. it was one, and all the hype surrounding that, that oh, we're good enough to be in the Big 12, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, that that one felt oh. like a really big one to me. Yeah, El Jefe's is probably number one. Garibay's Iowa State game field goal. The way you finished I, that one. Yeah, I mean, the way you finished was awesome. I don't remember it being an awesome atmosphere. Oh, I think it was a good atmosphere. It was a night game. I'm sure it was fine. <laughs> but, yeah, atmosphere yeah. included. That's That was just an amazing finish. And opponents matter. Like like I said, the Texas thing, the reason the West Virginia one's high on my list is because it was the fifth-ranked team yeah. in the country mm-hmm. at the time. And he was like a Heisman candidate. Yeah, until, until yeah. he came to Lubbock. Yeah. 
Yeah, you kind of knocked the Heisman trophy out of his hands. Strip sack. Lots of those this weekend, please. <laughs> we'll take those. Ben, you got any <clears throat> other answers? I mean, I too would go along with that Texas win with Bijan Robinson fumbling leading up to that last second field goal. It's it's hard not to go against that. Or not to pick that, excuse me. Yeah. But um if I were to pick another one, I would go with an, the Oklahoma one later that year because the fact that they have constantly dominated you year after year, mm-hmm. you yeah. fail, fail to respond. Even in the Leach years, like, what was it? Two weeks after the Texas game, you have, like, Jermaine Gresham, of all guys, just put up a field day on you. And uh, just the idea of topping o- Oklahoma at home on their way out of the Big 12, it's, mm-hmm. it's hard not to pick that one either. Yeah, that was a great one, too. And you win that one late. But they still had one more year in the Big 12. But you didn't play on the next year. Yeah. We knew, we knew still, that that was. Still. And wasn't Lincoln still there? Or was Venables already? That would have been Lincoln's last year. Because I think he's only been I at so. USC for two years. Yeah. Yeah, I think and so. It hadn't gone so great for him. It has not. Or Venables. It has not. So. Yeah, it's so kind of sad. Like, I think about awesome wins of late and uh, – in the last few years or so, I mean, the bowl games seem like, I mean, the one against Ole Miss, I, I thought in was fun. At the Texas Bowl was just awesome atmosphere. Yep. Oh, and it was a blast. And two fan bases that really, really showed out, and it was a lot of fun. Clearly, it looked like you wanted to be there a little bit more than the old Rebels. Mm-hmm. So um, that was a blast. But like you mentioned it, I mean, if, crazy as it sounds, it feels like so many of your good wins – your really good wins of late have been on the road. So, and again, I wasn't trying to bring everybody down with this. It was just, oh, no, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, but it is kind of sad. Like, you think back, because I've got so many memories of awesome games in the 2000 to 2009 era. I mean, there's so many of those games where you can well, point to this one pe- or that. The 08 Texas game, the 07 OU game, the 05 OU game. Like, there's. There's That's the thing that Mike Leach did. He gave you – I mean, there'd be games that you were so incredibly frustrated with him, but you beat your rivals a bunch. Mm-hmm. You won at home a bunch. And, I mean, it made for a lot of a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, each and every year. You you want to, you know, kick something over a loss or two every season, but you also would win ones that you didn't think you were going to get. And you had, you had your way for the most part with the Aggies during the Leach era, and, and you – Kind of held your own against the Longhorns during the Leach era. Yeah, so or close to it at least. Yeah, so I, and I, I think it feels like you've had a few more memorable ones um, under Joey McGuire than maybe I don't think I can't even remember one under Matt Wells. Like the the Iowa State field goal was technically his era, but no, it wasn't because he was. No, that was, that was Sonny Cumbie's era. He gone. So. I mean, you just think back, there just wasn't just a ton at home in those previous ones. You've had a few, like the, the Houston one and the Texas one. Um, and and the, the disappearing of rivalries also hurts that because those games feel like they mean more. But the point of the whole question, and if someone says, ask this next week, choice, come on. <laughs> My bad. The point of it is you have opportunity. You do. This week. For mm-hmm. this to be a very memorable game, because you win this game, you will be in that college football playoff ranking next week. That that one we're talking about, and I want to strangle this dude right now. I said, if you win, I just I'm, I'm going just... ifs on everything. I'm not guaranteeing anything, Jamie. I'm just saying I'm ready to be to to erase Texas Tech's name from that list of teams that hasn't been in the college football playoff rankings. I'm ready for Tech to go. We away. know who to be angry with Saturday night. Every one of us knows. Or just celebrate my words. If it goes wrong. This has been the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Go to 100-7thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.